In this video, I want to explain about the concept of variance inflation factors and how we can use them as a method for diagnosing whether we have the presence of a high degree of multicollinearity in our regression. So the idea here is that we have some sort of regression model whereby we've got yi is equal to alpha plus beta 1 times x1i plus beta 2 times x2i all the way up to, let's say, beta p times xpi plus some error, epsilon i. And we've spoken about these sort of problems which are inherent in having high degrees of um, multicollinearity in your regression. It's going to result in your regression being unstable and also it's going to inflate the standard errors which you get on your individual coefficients. So we spoke about two methods which we could use to diagnose for the presence of multicollinearity or a high degree of multicollinearity in your regression. The first one is to look at the correlation matrix of your individual variables. So if you find that there's a high degree of correlation between two variables, you might think twice about including both of those variables in your regression, because if you do, it might result in relatively unstable regression coefficients. Secondly, you could do just a scatter plot of each of your individual variables against all the other variables. But note that both of these methods are sort of bivariate methods for just seeing whether there is just a relationship between one of your variables and one of the other variables. Sometimes we'd like a slightly more sort of um, powerful concept whereby we're looking at can we explain one particular variable in terms of combinations or linear combinations of all the other variables. And that motivates the sort of construction of something which we call a variance inflation factor. And the idea with a variance inflation factor is that the first thing we do is we run a regression of one of our independent variables, so let's say we run a regression of x1 or x1i, on all the other independent variables. So we regress it on delta naught plus delta 1 times x2i plus delta 2 times, let's say, x3i, and we include all the other independent variables up to delta p minus 1 times xpi plus some sort of error vi. And the idea is that if we run this auxiliary regression, we will get out a value of r squared. So the r squared here essentially tells us how well is x1i described by movements in the other variables. So the high degree of r squared means that that variable is likely multicollinear with linear combinations of the other variables. So perhaps if you get a high value of r squared, then you might think twice about, in this context, including x1 in your regression. But the idea with variance in inflation factors is that you run a series of auxiliary regressions, one of these auxiliary regressions for each of the different independent variables. So we would regress x2i on delta naught plus delta 1 times x1i um, plus delta 2 times x3i, let's say, all the way up to delta p minus 1 times xpi, and we get a value of r squared out from this regression. So we call the first one, let's say, r squared 1, the second one, r squared 2. And we do this all the way up until the sort of pth um, regression, which we run of xpi on all the other variables. And the higher the degree of r squared, then that means that there is a higher degree of multicollinearity associated with that particular variable. So if you get a high value of r squared, a value of r squared which is close to 1, you might think twice about including that variable in your regression. So we could just look at the r squared, but it actually turns out that what we actually do instead, because it's quite hard to compare r squared, um, we actually look to inflate the differences between these different values of um, r squared. So what we do is we say, let's calculate the variance inflation factor for each of the different r squareds which have been calculated, which is equal to 1 over 1 minus r squared j, where the j here means that we're just going to run from the r square which we obtained from the first regression all the way up to the r square which we obtained from the pth regression. And how does this variance inflation factor actually work? Well, if r squared is close to 1, the denominator is going to be very small, which is going to mean that 1 divided by the denominator is going to be quite large. So in practice, if we get a value of vif which is greater than about 5, then we might not want to include that particular variable in the regression, or at least in its sort of current state of um, all the other variables being included in the regression. Whereas if we get a value of 
the variance inflation factor, which is less than about sort of five, then it's probably okay to include that variable and you're not going to have a particularly unstable um, regression model. So to conclude, the variance inflation factor is something which most statistical software programs can calculate pretty much instantaneously, and it provides a little bit of insight into what the degree of multicollinearity is in your model and with which variables it is most associated.